Hello and person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss yet another unusual galactic discovery coming out of James Webb Space Telescope. A discovery of a galaxy visible in a distant universe when the universe was only about 600 million years old, at a redshift of 8.29. But what makes this unusual galaxy, now referred to as the Firefly Sparkle, kind of exciting is the fact that this is the first time in history that we're able to observe individual tiny galactic parts as this early galaxy is being assembled, in this case allowing astronomers to essentially reconstruct the overall shape of this galaxy, discovering individual differences in various parts of the galaxy, and helping us visualize a galaxy that turns out might have been extremely similar to the early Milky Way. And so here once again we have a groundbreaking discovery from the James Webb, allowing us to see a super distant galaxy with a lot of detail. And so let's talk about some of this, focusing on how this was discovered and what we're actually seeing. But I guess first, let's get the important stuff out of the way. What we are observing in this galaxy right now seems to match directly a lot of theoretical predictions. And specifically predictions in regards to galactic formation and how large galaxies essentially got assembled from individual smaller pieces right in the beginning of the universe. And so what we're seeing here is basically a kind of a Milky Way-like galaxy progenitor that seems to be at least 10,000 times smaller and less massive. But despite being so small and despite being so young, it was captured in this image. And in this case, it's all because of this. Max J1423, a really massive galactic cluster at a distance of 6.6 .6 billion light years away from us that's essentially so massive that it produces an extremely powerful gravitational lens and it was actually discovered and analyzed over a decade ago. And so due to these very powerful gravitational lensing effects, quite a lot of distant light becomes amplified, and in some cases by thousands of times. And it just so happens that some of these lenses produced a very strange arc, although technically these arcs are pretty common. But in this case, what made this arc kind of special is really the shape itself. It was basically stretched into a very long, but also relatively bright, sparkling line which seem to possess different colors inside. And well, almost right away, this turned out to be a really distant object, basically located in the so-called Cosmic Dawn, the early time in the universe when a lot of galaxies were still forming, a lot of gas was still neutral and prevented a lot of light from traveling, making most observations extremely challenging. And so in most cases, a lot of galaxies at these distances resemble tiny dots or tiny smudges, barely visible at all. Here's for example one of the previous record holders for the distance, the galaxy known as GNZ11 at a slightly higher redshift of 11. And so here we don't really see any structure, we just basically see a kind of a smudgy spot. But here astronomers got a little bit lucky. Even though the light here traveled for approximately 30 billion light years, it actually produced a little bit more than a smudge, revealing individual shapes. And essentially revealing individual structures inside this galaxy, which could now be studied individually and compared to one another. And so despite the stretching and the bending from the gravitational lens, here astronomers reconstructed the shape of this galaxy, producing something that looks like this. And this is really strange. It's basically a kind of a teardrop-shaped galaxy that seems to contain 10 powerful star clusters, but in slightly different regions. Two of the extremely bright clusters are sort of in the upper or the north part of the galaxy, whereas the eight other clusters seem to be bunched together on the bottom, don't produce as many stars anymore, and are slowly forming an actual galactic shape. And so here we have a very strange bilobal distribution that for the first time ever shows us how a young galaxy potentially formed. But importantly, each one of these clusters seems to be at a very different phase of evolution and contains stars of different age. In other words, they all start at different times. And even more importantly, if combined together, these clusters seem to form at least half of the mass of this entire galaxy. And we even get to see some of the diffuse light from the surrounding stars. And so to astronomers, this is an amazing image. It literally shows us a physical process of a galactic assembly, something we've never seen before, or at least not so early on. But as you can see in this image, there are two more things here that are kind of exciting. Two companions. One approximately 6,500 light years away, and one approximately 42,000 light years away. And so in essence we're looking at some kind of a triple galactic system where these three galaxies will most likely become one in the near future, essentially confirming another major hypothesis. 
young galaxies very likely cannibalize each other, with only one eventually remaining. And so this growth by absorption is based on a relatively old theory. And so in this case we seem to have found one of the progenitors. But in galaxies like the Milky Way, we do see the end result, because galaxies like ours contain hundreds of different globular clusters and a lot of tidally disrupted objects orbiting for billions of years. But this is very likely how all of this started. And interestingly, here we even have the total mass. Each of these clusters, for example, seems to be at least 100,000 to 1 million solar masses, with the entire galaxy being no more than 20 million solar masses in total. But surprisingly, a lot of these clusters seem to contain way more density and obviously way more stars and way more gas compared to anything we have today. Which suggests a much more vigorous star formation and basically accelerated growth and development. Something James Webb has already seen many times and we'll discuss in some of the previous videos in the description. But one of the reasons this is known as the Firefly Sparkle is really because this galaxy is currently bursting with star formation. It's growing super fast and that's basically one of the main reasons why it's actually visible to us. Nobody actually believed we would ever see so much detail coming from such a distant galaxy, even from the James Webb Space Telescope. Yet here we are. James Webb was able to resolve an extremely distant galaxy, once again approximately 600 million years after the Big Bang, or at a distance of 30.1 billion light years, being able to see individual parts only tens of light years across. So this is literally the most detailed and the most accurate observation we've had so far from such a distant place in the universe. In comparison, here is a more recent image from the European Southern Observatory of a very similar cluster known as Massey 54 that's about 150 light years across, approximately 87,000 light years away from us. And so just the fact that we can see one of these objects so well, to me at least, is kind of mind-blowing. But even though this was just discovered, we obviously already have some really important findings. For example, one surprise here is that most of the mass seems to be inside globular clusters, or these very powerful star clusters that seem to represent up to 60% of total mass. In contrast, in a typical galaxy, globular clusters are usually just a fraction of the mass. For example, the Milky Way contains approximately 150 globular clusters, containing roughly 100 million stars in total. But the Milky Way itself contains 400 billion stars, so there is definitely a huge difference. Here though, in this young galaxy, it seems to be almost the opposite. More stars and more mass inside clusters, only some stars outside. At the same time, because we see different colors in these clusters, it suggests star formation was not simultaneous, but actually happened in different stages, very likely millions of years apart. For example, some of these blue clusters are very likely only a few hundred thousand years in age and might have just started producing stars, whereas the older clusters, especially the red ones, could be millions of years old and potentially represent some of the first objects forming in this baby galaxy. But because in this case, the overall mass of this galaxy seems to match directly what we believe Milky Way was like back in the days, to scientists studying our own galaxy, this is a really exciting discovery. It really shows us what the Milky Way was like in the first few hundred million years after its creation, while also indirectly showing us the next natural step, the galactic cannibalism or absorption. But because this is such an exciting discovery, we'll come back and talk more about this once there are some updates. Until then, check out some of the previous similar videos on the topic of unusual galaxies discovered by the James Webb in some of the videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.